Oh, okay. That one cranked the old feather duster down. Oh, it's a big, big, big crappie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MD Edits. Today, I am in South Dakota, and we're gonna be going for some panfish. Bluegills, perch, crappie, mostly bluegill and crappie, I think. As you can tell right now, we are in the shack. We just got done uh, catching some walleyes out here this morning, and now, the sun is completely up and the panfish are definitely starting to move. We can see them on live scope. I think what we are going to do is we're gonna actually leave the shack. We are marking fish a little ways away from where we're set up right now on our walleye spot. And we're seeing big pods of panfish coming through. So I think we're gonna do some hole hopping. I think we're gonna pop out some holes. There's a bunch of holes from other people out there as well. And we're gonna take the live scope out and just see what we can get hooked up into. I'll show you guys who I'm with here today. First off, I'm still with good old buddy, Jared day, Clinch. Day eight here, buddy. Day eight? Yeah, we're gonna do How it. How many again. hours of sleep did we get last night? Not a lick. Not a lick. Not a lick. We traveled straight down from uh, Lake of the Woods, straight down to Fargo, and now we came straight to South Dakota this morning. And then we got this grease bomb. What's up, buddy? How we doing? Oh, you know, just burning my brother's spots with some out-of-staters. <laughs> no big deal, living the dream, can't complain. Oh man, always a good time with these guys. So like I said, we're gonna go ahead and pop out some holes out here. We're gonna do some hole hopping. It might get a little cold, might be a little bit windy, but we're gonna get after it. I will show you guys a little bit more as to what we're looking for, uh, some of the equipment we're gonna be using out here today. But yeah, I think, uh, I think we're giving up on the walleyes. Let's go catch some panfish. All right, so before we head outside, I just wanna go ahead and show you the old weapon of choice today. I have got the Feather Duster from Frostbite. This is an ultralight rod, very sensitive tip. We like that. Fiberglass rod. And uh, I have that paired up with this guy right here. Let me spin her around so that you can see this. Nice little spoon. This is the Micro Dinner Bell Spoon, pink and silver color there. That is what's gonna do the trick out here. Very natural color. We got fairly clear water that we're in today, so. We're gonna go ahead, hop outside, start messing around. Let's see what we can find. Oh boy. That's a good fish, whatever it is. Got him. You got him. That's a walleye. What do you think it is, dude? Need some help? Oh, it's a, oh, it's a, a, it's large a largey. Okay, well, that's hey. kinda cool. We're back to Kenora. Back to Kenora, Ontario. <laughs> but hey, there you go. Thanks, champ. Oh, I just set my rod on you. Just smoked the dinner bell. Yeah, came up and smoked the old dinner bell. We had about 87,000 tiny little perch below us, and uh, they all started to swim away. That's because a game fish came in, and we're just cranking some largemouth. Short decided, fat. <clears throat> decided that the uh, dinner bell was going to be going in the old upper ducker, so. <laughs> Good reference. Shout out Shelly. How's your mother? There you are, Jay. Around with 17,000 perch on you. Get one, bud. Oh my. Look at, look at, look. <laughs> Do you think I got one? I think you got a bunch. <laughs> Dude, this is nuts. <laughs> See, there's one. See? <laughs> Holy baseball swing. I gotta get serious here. There's one. Oh, look out. This nice one. giant. Okay, this might actually be some decent fish coming in on the side. They're 20 feet out and I'm marking. Do you think there's nicer ones mixed in here? Or there, do you think? Yeah. What do we got here, bud? Oh, a little bluegill action, eh? Not a bad one either. Okay, I think we're gonna move. Yeah, let's move. Nice little gill. This is pretty bad. There's like one or two gills in there, but like most of them are all just micro perch. See ya. Let's try these holes. Okay. Next hole. Next hole. Ooh. How's your mother? Oh, that's a good mark. Holy. It's gonna eat up, eh? There he is. Oh. That's a pretty good one, too. Oh, that might be one of them pike. Eh? Might be. Or a little largey. 
If it if it's a large, it's a good one. That's I don't. Know. What do you think? I'm, I'm gonna go biggest crappie of my life. Carbonex <coughs> scream. Oh, broke off. No. Biggest crappie of my life. See ya. Dude, you gotta be. Yeah, nah, not not broke off. Just came off. Rip. That yeah. sucks, dude. That does. That yeah, that's disappointing. That was a good fish. Look at him all over there. Oh, he's gonna get one. Look at him coming up, 35 feet. Oh yeah, he's got him. Nice. There you go. Oh. Crappie, about I? But I want a crappie. Got a crappie over here, bud. Nice job, bud. Only get a hold holes for you here if you keep swap her own. There we go. Decent little crappie. This is the new strap. Check this out. All the way down to what we call bottom. Lift her up about three cranks. Give her an angle. Let her sit. Slowly raise it. Might have to kneel for this one. Holy, that's a good bluegill. Ooh, that looks good. Jeez, dude. That is a nice, nice bluegill. Take a look at that one, boys. Not a mega giant, but good fish. Woo, nonetheless. On the old dinner bell. Not tipped with anything. That's what I wanted to come out here and show you guys. You don't always have to put meat on it. A lot of guys think you do and you don't. That spoon is magnificent just the way it is. I'm not saying it won't help you if you get a little meat on there. Sometimes they like that. But sometimes if you show them the meat, they're just going to bite soft, you know? If you just don't show it to them right away, you get those bigger fish sometimes. So we're going to go ahead, drop it back down there. Nobody needs scope. You don't need it. Just drop her back down there and see what happens. Fishing blind. Hans are cold. I just want to see Brad throttle like a 15 inch crappie like this. That would be awesome. Oh, God. That one cranked the old feather duster down. Oh, it's a big, big, big crappie. <laughs> Holy. Now that is a slaunch. Look at the size of that crappie, you guys. What a beauty. That one just came up and crushed the dinner bell. We've got a community hole of people out here, so we're gonna try and keep our volume down a little bit just so they don't flock in on us. All right, got the dinner bell out of the old face hole. Let's go ahead and throw them on the bump. Man, oh that gosh. is a tank. Holy, make sure we got a closed lip touching. Almost 14 and a half. Holy, a little over 14 and a quarter. I'm gonna give them a quick dunk here and I'll show you guys one last good look at them. That is a giant crappie. Holy cow, nice and tall, fat, eating good. Smoking the dinner bell, we love that. Micro dinner bell, this fish is gonna go back. There we go. Didn't take long, she's all revved up. Man, it's actually been a bit since I've caught a crappie out of the ice that big. That was a pretty good one. Not the biggest I've ever caught, but one of the biggest I've ever pulled out of the ice. That was awesome. Whew, we're catching mega giants. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So what we've got going on right now is we're actually playing with a couple different ideas. We've got schools of panfish all over the place. And what we're noticing is that every time we drop the live scope down the hole, We've got three guys walking around right now and those fish are just swimming away. We're spooking them. So what we did is we set the live scope up about 35 feet away and then we walked over to these holes quietly, dropped right down. I can't even see the live scope. I'm just waiting for that soft tip to just bounce down or lift straight up. A lot of times crappies are gonna come up, they're gonna eat up and you're gonna see that rod tip just go like this and go straight up. That one did not. That one came in and crushed it. That was a pretty big fish. So let's go ahead. We're going to get the dinner bell back down there. Big bluegills, big crappies. We'll see what's next. They're private. Flooded Another nice one there. So. All right. Decent one going back. See ya. Time to be real. Uh-oh. Got him. Bluegill. Ooh. Ooh, he's swimming all over the place. Get him out of there. 
Nothing too crazy. Must not have enough meat on there, see? That's what happens. You spoil them, that's the problem. You say, oh, well they need meat, and then they eat meat all morning. And then they won't eat not anything but meat. Exactly. You guys gotta quit doing that, you know? You just gotta give them that beautiful bait just the way it is, and that's the way it be. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he like kissed it twice, come on. Come on. It's like, it's like giving a fat kid a cheeseburger, you know, and then asking him to eat carrots. It's not happening. You already gave him the Happy Meal. You know what's funny? I totally called that crappie happening like that. I just want to see Brad throttle like a 15-inch crappie like this. Oh, God. Oh, it's a big, oh big, big crappie. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. You really did. I was like, it'd be funny if you caught a 15-inch with no bait, with no vex. Huh. Gil. That one's better. That's definitely a gill. You can tell by the, the circles. Yeah, the circles. They always get wrapped around the deucer, too, when they do that. Another little guy. We might move spots. Not exactly sure yet. I converted over to a little meat on the dinner bell. Said I wouldn't. Here I am. John made me try it. I don't know what I think. Personally, I feel like if you don't use it and they really, really, really just are not biting at all whatsoever, can't catch a fish, sure, go ahead and try it after a while. But to me, if you can just make it as long as possible without using it, that's the way to go. Oh, this one's gonna come up and clobber it, maybe? What do you think, should we move? Really? All right, after I wax this one fish. Ooh, little guy. There we go. Little gill. Not a bad one. We need one of those mega giants to come back out. That would be pretty cool. It seems like there's a very very healthy population of this year class in this body of water. The amount of bluegills we're catching that are this size, everyone out here today is just catching those. I mean, they're good ones, you know, they're good fish, but we're just trying to target something just a tiny bit bigger than that if we could. It's crazy how automatic that dinner bell spoon is though. It's gotta be my favorite thing to use while ice fishing. Oh, look at this one coming up. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Ooh, a nice little crap, eh? The right ones just come up and want it. There's no second guessing. Okay, what's going on there? Ooh, hi, little bluegill. Woo! One piece of meat on there, John. It's working. Oh, he got it. You know what? I'm gonna give that to him. We're gonna give him the meat, send him back home. Well, guys, I don't know how much longer we're gonna stay out here, but John and I are just sitting out in the cold clapping some fish. Dinner bell spoon is what did it today. The micro dinner bell spoon. And earlier this morning, it was the tantrum. Oh, hello. Look at that, the tantrum. <laughs> the tantrum. Guys, if you've never used them, go ahead and check out some of the baits that Frostbite offers um, between the dinner bell spoon, the Frostbite tantrum, the scissor kick, the meathead jigs, the head spinners, they've got all sorts of really cool stuff. They've got a bunch of different plastics that you can pair with them. Honestly, just a really good time to come out and go ice fishing and just use something that you know you're gonna have confidence in, whether it's for panfish, whether it's for walleye or any other game fish. Um, every time we come out here, we're just crushing fish, you know? Some days are better than others, but good old reliable, always a good time down there. So again, guys, using the feather duster rod out here today, one of my favorite rods to use. This is a 34 inch ultralight. Very nice tip to this rod, but still plenty of backbone for when you do get into a big one like we had earlier today. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to go ahead and slap that thumbs up button for us. We'd really appreciate that. If you guys wanna see anything here in the near future, let us know down in the comment section. Guys, I've been kinda of all over the place lately. Um, we went up to Ontario, we were driving through Winnipeg, uh, went up to Lake of the Woods, met John in North Dakota, now we're down here in South Dakota, it's been just crazy. Minnesota possibly tomorrow, potentially back to Wisconsin tomorrow night. John's hooked up again. We're gonna get the heck out of here. Again guys, if you enjoyed, slap that thumbs up button and we'll see you on the next one. Tight Lines from NB Edits. Oh, John, that's pretty thick in there right there. Ha, ha, ha.